everyone's having a wonderful day today i got in store is the hours of devastation bundle they're no longer called fat packs they're bundles and they now have 10 boosters instead of nine uh right on the front it looks like you got a nice old like planeswalker huge horns got like the floating thing reminds me of like mox opal or something like that it looks like there's some weird like storage box or something here maybe just a cardboard spacer on the back of it, it says, Unleash your endgame. For generations, you manipulated the inhabitants of Omenkent from the shadows. They called you a god pharaoh and competed for your favor. Eagerly awaits your return. Now the hour has come and they will discover your true plan for their puny civilization. Complete your total destruction. So it seems like they think you're some sort of god or something, but you really want to destroy them. Pretty brutal stuff. What does this contain? It says it contains a player's guide with encyclopedia, hours of devastation card box, uh, which is the box itself, 10 hours of devastation booster packs, a 25 double-sided tokens, 80 card basic land pack, includes at least 25 full art basic lands, so I guess they still have the full art basic lands, at least 25 out of the 80, a spin down life counter, which is a 20 sided dice, and the magic quick, quick reference card. All right, cool. Let's uh, open it and see what it's all about. It's been a while since I opened up anything Magic the Gathering, so I'm really not sure what cards are in this set, but I'm excited and happy to open it to find out. And I don't know when they changed from fat packs to bundles. I think this is a relatively new thing. Oh, I wish I had a knife instead of a pen right now, but this will have to do. Just uh, rip it a little bit. All right. And see how they change the fat packs to the bundles. And I wonder why they changed the name. Alright, let me just put this to the side for now. Alright, let's uh, slide it out and see what it is. Uh, I got one of the RFID cards for so when the alarm goes off, if you don't pay for it. it looks like we got the Hours of Devastation Player's Guide. Kind of just goes through the lore of it and some of the um, some of the cool cards i don't really want to look at the cards right now i'd rather be surprised to see what there is but it is cool tells you a little bit about it nicolo bolas i guess he's one of the planned walkers here the god pharaoh and in the back of it they should have pretty much the card encyclopedia for the set which is right here which is actually really helpful and cool especially if you want to see if you have all the cards or looking for specific cards and you can read the text on all of them see the mana cost and everything and help build your deck with the help of this if you'd like which is pretty cool so it has that and uh, I don't know if there's it looks like uh, there's some crazy looking card right here invoke the will of god pharaoh invocation cards found in booster packs at low frequency, has special premium foil coating and its own unique card from expansions. And interesting. It looks like it's some like hieroglyphics or something like that. It looks wild, so it looks like uh, this is a new expedition or something like that. Which is pretty cool and hopefully you get one today. Also a planeswalker right there. So this is always cool. Uh, cool picture on the back. It's always nice to have this information. Let's see if this opens up to a picture. It looks like it does. Let me just find the corner, see if it has some of that sticky glue that comes off easily and it won't rip it cool it has that sort of glue that you can just peel off in like a little ball and does no damage to the cardboard so if you do want to display it it's not going to be ripped or anything like that just throw this to the side and uh, it looks like it's almost this way this time maybe like hang it from the wall cool I like that I kind of wish it was sideways but it's not and I did notice that uh, the new boxes have this little sl uh, slant right here instead of having the little thumb holes here to take it off. It has a slant, which uh, looks kind of nice, but sometimes you might think it needs to close more, but it doesn't, so you'd be squishing it. And it won't. Good quality box. Keep to the side for now. This, I'm not sure what it is. It does have a symbol on it, so it doesn't... I don't think it's just trash. Maybe you can just put little dice or something in here. I doubt cards will fit in here sideways. It doesn't look wide enough at all. Maybe if you lay them flat, you can put them in, but they'll be shaking around. So this is just a little space thing, I guess. Interesting. And uh, let's open this up to see what's inside. Cool box. Oh, interesting. That's oh, like a, a cleared one. I've never seen a semi-clear dice from Magic the Gathering, and it's a red one, which is cool. 
Hmm, got an 11. Awesome. I kind of like that color. It looks like it also comes with a little box that you can actually put your deck in, which is really nice and really helpful. I'm happy that they did that. A little improvement on the old boxes. Looks like we got the Magic the Gathering quick a reference, which is good for new players and just to help you refresh if you need it. Again, with that gummy glue that you can just take off. And it just tells you the basics of how to play the game. Uh, beginning phase, main phase, combat phase, stuff like that. Pretty cool. It tells you how to cast spells and a little bit about the manas. Cool. So this is always nice for a new player. Looks like we have the land pack with some full arts up front. And it looks like uh, the horns from this guy. Very cool. And we should have 10 booster packs. And there's also... Uh, the token thing, a zombie cat. Ooh, I kind of like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put this box to the side for now. Looks like this only fits in one way, so it's a little bit uh, longer than it is wide, which is cool, and I assume it would probably fit a hundred cards, probably like a commander deck or something like that, which is very nice. Just pan this up a little bit, and uh, I guess let's crack the lamp pack just to see how many... They probably give you exactly 25 full out lands. But we'll see. Of course, they have the full-out land out front. I just would like to count to see how many full-out lands that they give you, in case you're curious. Mm -hmm. Interesting symbol as well. It's got the little horns in the corner. So hopefully I get the Planeswalker. That'd be pretty cool. My favorite full art lands are definitely the ones from Unglued. I think I have a couple of those. The unsets are always quite a bit of fun to play. Of course, they're not legal in any other format, but they're still a lot of fun. Um, okay, so we got a nice stack of just uh, regular art lands. Very cool. Good for building decks. A good variety of every type. No wastes. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Exactly 25. And on the back of this, I believe it said includes at least 25 full art basic lands. So it's probably 25 full art basic lands for every pack. I doubt that they're going to add in a lot more. And then let's check out the tokens. Which is pretty cool. I like how they give you tokens now, so you don't have to make your own or anything like that. And they said they are double-sided. So cool. Got a bunch of zombie, just generic 2-2s, two which is awesome. Those are the most popular zombies, I would say, for trading tokens. Quite a few. Some uh, warriors with vigilance, some 1-1s. 1-1 one uh, one -one creature, a cat with lifelink. Cool. It's like a sphinx, it looks like. It looks giant, though. Just walking around the huge temple quite like it. Then you got a creature token insect with flying in haste. Looks like a red blue creature. And then a random <laughs> horse. It's got horns. Beautiful sunset in the background. You can see the huge uh, horns also in the background. Very cool. Like the sun right above his foot, right below his foot. And he's got a little beard going on. Beautiful clouds, beautiful everything. I do miss the art from some of the old sets, I'm not going to lie. Most of the new art looks quite uh, computer generated, as if, well, I know that they're creating it on a computer. And I do miss seeing like actual pencil scratches or paintbrush marks and stuff like that to show that it was made by, I guess, I would say with more love or something. But I know that the artists put a lot of time and effort into creating their beautiful masterpieces, and I love them. And we should have 10 booster packs right here, so let's go ahead and count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. And uh, usually they're like in saran wrap for the other fat packs, I believe. And people also say that the old fat packs um, had really good chance of like mixed up. Like I know booster boxes, they're like in a set order, the packs that they're printed in. And I think for fat packs or hopefully the bundles that they just grab random packs and throw them in. So you could have better chances for rare cards. So let's go ahead and open one and see what we get. It's been quite a while since I opened a magic pack, and I'm quite excited. And I don't really know the sets, the cards in this set. We got a Kindled Fury, a 1 red, instant target creature gets plus 1 plus 0, and gains first strike until end of turn. 
Very cool. So it looks like uh, the blue guy is about to hit this guy. And uh, hit him with the first strike before he even knows. It looks like he's going very fast. He's on fire. Almost like a demon or something like that. It's a big pyramid in the background. He's nice and blue. This guy kind of looks like he has his eyes closed or something. But they both have like ram heads. And this one's just a skeleton. And this guy still got his flesh on him. Very cool. I feel bad for him. He's about to get hit in the head. And this is by Craig J. Speary. Very cool. I'm going to go ahead and organize these. Put the commons in one pile, the uncommons in the other, and the rares and mythic in the last. This one is an aerial glide, a two and a blue, a creature drake. That's a 2 2 creature. It is flying, and when aerial glide attacks, other attacking creature, other target. Another target attacking creature gains flying until end of turn. Cool. So uh, you can give another creature flying. I guess it will grab onto his tail and just fly in the air with him. And then just drop him on the other side. Very cool. Looks like he's running away from like an earthquake or something like that. Flying. Interesting red wings uh, underneath. I don't know if that's from like fire or something reflecting up at him. Very cool. Almost like very pharaoh looking like. Well, they did say like a god pharaoh. So this set might be going back... And uh, representing a lot of Egypt, I guess. Or something like that. For example, this picture. Very cool. I like it. The next card I got is Act of Heroism. Looks like this girl is someone you don't want to mess with. She's uh, fighting skeleton zombies or demons or something like that. Protecting her town. Got a long sword in one hand. Another sword in the other. Blocking two attacks at the same time while screaming extremely loud. Nice lightness over here. Darkness over here. Balances it. So your eyes focus on the center. And uh, one in a white, an instant untapped target creature it gets plus two plus two until end of turn and can be blocked and can block an additional creature this turn. So you're going to untap a creature if uh, someone's attacking because it is an instant. That creature gets plus two plus two, give it some strength and defense and can block an additional creature which could save your butt and help you out. Very cool. And this one is by Miguel Villa <laughs> Villanovu. <laughs> Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that name. This one is a Sidewander Naga. It looks like a cobra with a spear. An extremely long tail. You can see uh, his slithering path in the background. It looks like he's got something on his mind. And he looks like he's going with a purpose. You almost see like a sandstorm in the background covering up the sun a little bit. Really like the balance of this picture. The cool uh, desert slash mountains over there. And who knows how long he's slithering for. It could have been for days. This is a 2 and a green, a creature, Naga Warrior, is a 3-2 creature, as long as you control a desert, or th or 3 is a desert card in your graveyard, or 3, or there is a desert card in your graveyard, Sinowider Naga gets plus 1 plus 0, and has Trample. So cool, if uh, there's a desert card in your graveyard, he'll get plus 1 plus 0, and has Trample. But uh, he does uh, only a green casting cost, so if you want that, you're going to have to mix in some planes to your deck. Very cool. Rawr. I'm not sure what that is down there. I think that's just a shadow. Hmm, cool. Don't want to mess with cobras. Ooh, zombie jackal warrior. Very Egyptian feeling for this. Um, Kenra Eternal, a one and a black, a zombie jackal warrior. That's a 2-2 two -two for a cheap casting cost as well. And it's afflict one. Whenever a creature becomes blocked, defending player lose one life. Cool. So if he gets blocked, the uh, opponent loses one life regardless if he hits them or not dark picture he's got one of those i don't know what those weapons are called maybe it's a club or a little bit sharp on the inside very blue looking armor slash bones got some gold on him as well it looks like he's protecting something not letting someone leave to the light and they're staying in the dark really like it this one is by tomas joduski cool he got a hippo he's got some nasty looking teeth right there People say that hippos are more dangerous than crocodiles, and I'd believe it. A rampaging hippo, watch out. Looks like uh, he's in a flooded part of the city. Some of it's tipping over. It almost looks like he has like a hard, scaly back or something. Got like some spines on him. Got some wicked, nasty tusks coming out. Couldn't imagine have teeth like that. Big mouth, and uh, he just looks like he's charging through something, yelling to get him off there, his land. Four and two green, a creature hippo with trample. It's a five six creature and has cycling. Cool. Cycling uh, two, pay two mana, discard this card and draw a card. So if you have this in your hand and uh, you don't like it and you have some extra mana and don't have anything else to play that turn, pay two mana. You can just take this card, discard it, and draw another card so you can have a 
better chance for your next turn. And he is a quite big creature for a six mana cost. Cool. Got a gilded Corridon. Looks like some sort of rhino with interesting hair or tusks. I'm not sure. He's blowing steam out of his mouth, out of his nose. So it looks like he's quite heated. It looks like he's in a place where there's a lot of heat or something like that. A lot of red glow to the area. It is a four and a red, a creature beast. When a gilded uh, Corridon attacks, if you control a desert or there's a desert card in your graveyard, target creature can't block this turn. Okay, so it's a 4-4 creature, but if you have a desert on, or there's a desert card in your graveyard, target creature can't block this turn. Interesting. I'm not sure if they're saying desert counts as a plains or some other subtype that I'm going to have to check out in a little bit. Hopefully I'll find a desert card and know. But it looks like uh, he's quite blinged out. He's got some like cuffs on his legs, a nice little necklace on him, and his eyes look kind of closed. It looks like he's bending his head down, ready to attack almost looks like he has an aura glow to him you can see some like broken trees in the background maybe there's a fire going on or something to give that red glow nice lighting on him you can see it uh just hitting him there and reflecting off back into the camera i really like it and this one is by matt stewart q we got a god pharaoh it's faithful looks like uh she's almost vanishing or something like that just disappearing I believe one of her legs looks kind of hidden, or maybe that's just uh, her dress blocking it, or she's just disappearing. She's got an interesting weapon, kind of reminds me of his horns in the background. It is a one creature, a one, a one cost creature, a plains, a creature human wizard. That's a zero four. Got a quite a bit of defense, no attack. Whenever you cast a blue, black, or red spell, you gain one life. Oh, that's pretty cool, especially if you play this early. But um, you'd have to mix with other cards, because if you play only in white, you're not going to gain any life from it. But it still has quite a big defense, which is cool, which you might be used wanting. And it looks like she has a blue crystal in her hand, and she's holding it up, either enchanting something or getting some powers from it. it looks like she's in the rubble of this building. The camera angles to the side, which I quite like. And it just shows like she has fate and power, and she's not giving up. Cool picture. This is a Traveler's Amulet. Very cool, very Egyptian feeling. Uh, it is just a one generic mana cost. Looks like uh, it's either reflecting some light or shooting some beam off somewhere. Beautiful sunset in the background, holding it up, just uh, showing that. Got like a bangle on his arm, interesting necklace, very shiny. Looks like it's worth a lot of money. The clouds and everything in the background is beautiful. You can almost see little specks of blue there, uh, just like the magic emanating off of the beam. Very cool. And it is, uh, once you play it, you can pay one. It says, Sacrifice Traveler's Amulet. Search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it and put that into your hand. Then shuffle your library. So it can grab out a land card, which is cool. Especially if you have a multiple colored land deck and you need to find a specific one uh, for your cards. Or you just need another piece of land. It's a pretty cool card. Beautiful art, by the way. Love, love this guy. This is by Marco Nilor. Got a striped river winder. Looks like some sort of giant basilisk or snake or something like that. Yellow and blue, usually bright colors on snakes, means they're poisonous, unless it's the mock coral snakes. I can't remember the name of it. But still, don't ever play with snakes unless you know what you're doing. This is a six and a blue, a creature serpent with hexproof. Hexproof is pretty cool. This creature can't be targeted spells or abilities your opponent controls, but you can use your spells or abilities on it. And it also has cycling for a blue. Which, uh, then again, if you have this in your hand and it's early on in the game and you want a lower cost card or something like that, pay a blue, discard this card, and draw another. It's a 5-5 five, five creature with hexproof that costs 7 to play, kind of expensive, and it has a cycling ability. Looks like it's this whole area looks kind of degraded or something like maybe he is starting to reckon everybody and take over and just destroy the whole town. And there's monsters running rampant. Got this castle in the background, see the horns there, the sun is beautifully centered in there. Um, Maybe like the sun's aligned or something like that, and it's causing the creature to go crazy, or the whole town and whole uh, plane to go crazy. We got like decayed, uh, not sure, buildings or just a wall or something like that, and a very kind of violent looking picture. He's got his teeth showing, got a mean look on his face. You definitely wouldn't want to go pet him. Got the nice uh, foreground of like the land. Got uh, the basculus, the water snake, the serpent in the background splashing around. Sticking his whole like body out, letting people know that he's 
ready to attack. He looks like he's close to land. Maybe there's people here coming up against him. Got the dark, dark clouds in the background. See the castle over there and the created city there. Very cool. This art is by Craig, Craig J. Spearing. First uncommon, got Nissa's defeat. Oh no, looks like Nissa's kind of out of luck right here. Two and a green. Got the silver for uncommon over there. It's a sorcery. Destroy target forest, green enchantment, or green's planeswalker. If that permanent was Nissa's planeswalker, draw a card. So this one pretty much tells you if you kill Nissa with it, you get an extra boost, which is draw a card. And it doesn't look like she's in good. It looks like the vines, the forest is attacking her. And maybe she trusted them, so she let them get close. But then they took her, and now they're strangling her. Poor Nissa. Quick, chop the vines off. Hmm, dark picture. Looks like smoke and, or something just really dark. You can see the agony in her face. And she's not liking it. We got the second in common. Visitor of the Truth. A three and a white. It looks like this guy has extremely bright light here and he's trying to stop these zombies it looks like or maybe he's attacking them it's hard to tell the zombies don't look like they have weapons in their hands or the skeletons maybe he's just uh, talking to them I can't tell if that's a sword sticking in his arm that zombie or he's just holding something in his hand but pretty creepy and the whole city's on fire Got his bright light that he's summoning in the background to try to save everybody. Huge horde of stuff in the background. Not a good situation. He's got his armor on. Got a kind of a disgruntled look on his face. And hopefully he makes it out of there. And this is a 3-2 creature for a 3 and a planes. You may exile Visitor of the Truth as you, it attacks. Oh, you may exert. It won't untap during your next untap step. Interesting. When a creature, when you exert a creature, tap target creature and opponent controls. Oh, so if you want to attack and they have another creature out and you know they're going to block with it, exert with him and uh, you make them tap so you can get your damage through. But this guy won't tap the next turn. Won't untap your next turn. Pretty cool. Maybe unless you had like an icy manipulator or something like that to untap him. We got Vizor of and a doted, a uh, three and a blue, it looks like some sort of mage or something, a clerk, lots of clerks in here, very spiritual stuff on this set, it looks like, and also probably, I'm sure, demons and zombies, which it looks like, looks like you got like a dog creature, or like a bear creature back there, looks like he's holding up his scepter, or his sphere, and uh, casting some enchantment or something like that, looks like he has a tattoo on his head, oh no, just like a gold, uh, interesting like head, headband headgear or something like that very cool robes liked all the blue energy like magic coming off of it and uh yeah it's got like the cat creatures back there like sphinx very egyptian feeling uh, you can see like this v right here they're like in some sort of i guess gorge or something like that and that's uh the outside you can see some of the sun bleeding in darker around here he's really the centerpiece a little off center which i like and uh he's saying something very powerful creature human clerk when Visitor of Anodoted enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a creature card with Exner with Eternalize or Embalm. Put the card on your graveyard, then shuffle your library two to four. So these are other, uh, I guess, little powers that other cards have that I'm not sure what they mean yet. Embalm is something to do with dead people I know, and Eternalize is probably something with, I would say, magic. Whenever you activate an Eternalize or Embalm ability, draw a card. So, you get a use him when you play him. You can look for a creature card in your library and with a Eternalize or Embalm. And also, if you play a creature card or activate the ability with Eternalize or Embalm, you get a draw card. So cool. Ooh, these are cool. I really like these kind of cards. I like the double, the double kind of cards. Looks like this is Driven, a one in a green, a sorcery. Small little picture here. You got the gold symbol here, and also, no, oh, not a gold symbol there. Just that one, like a little holographic disc. Until end of turn, creatures you control gain trample, and whenever this creature deals damage to a player, draw a card. Cool. So your creatures have trample. So if there's someone blocking, they have the more attack than their defense. That damage will run over into them, and you get a draw a card. And it's all of your creatures. So if you have a big group of them, you could draw a lot of cards and do a lot of damage. Very cool. It looks like uh, this person is reaching in somewhere and then some sort of snake bit him and it's either draining the yellow into him or pushing the yellow into him poisoning him doesn't look good you can see the rattler on it so he's some sort of rattler snake and those are venomous 
to watch out. It looks like he was kind of in a swampy area. You can see some of the brush going into it. Interesting. And this one is uh, Despair, one in a black. It is a sorcery, very, very small image over here. It looks like uh, this is the poison went into him, so it looks like it was bleeding the poison into him. He's fallen over. You can see the teeth mark there. It's spreading up his arm. You should put a tourniquet on there. And it says Sorcery Aftermath. Until end of turn, creatures you control gain menace. And and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card. So this one is they get menace, and if you deal damage to them, they discard a card instead of you drawing one. And this is one in a black. So this will work either if you want to put it in a green deck or a black deck or both of them. But if you put it only in the green deck, you'd only be use this one. Only in the black deck, you'd only be use that one. So that's a lot of cool. Got a planes, and then a warrior token. Cool. Go ahead and put this in the land pile, and this in the token pile. On to the next pack. Ooh, interesting arc. This one is Sandblast. Interesting. It looks like the sand is just obliterating this guy. It's like an explosion of color. Some reds in there. It could be the blood. And uh, he's got like a weird skull thing with downward facing horns that he wore on his head. His body's just disintegrating. There's some interesting looking... I don't know if those are hands of some sort of bat creature or something like that. And it's just like an explosion of color. Very interesting particle work. Very cool. Very centralized a picture. You definitely can't miss what they're trying to say. And that is, the sand is hurting him. Two and a white. Instant sandblast deals uh, five damage to target attacking or blocking creature. So for three, you get to do five damage only to attacking or blocking creatures. So. Cool. Uh, the camera's going off center. Uh, put this in the common. This is Kindled Fury. We got this one already. Uh, the red. Instant target creature gets plus one plus zero and gains first strike until on the turn. Got an Avon Reed Stalker. Looks like he's harvesting the reeds with his like scythe or something like that, but now he has to fight with it. it looks like some sort of what kind of bird is that? A, uh, a pelican or something kind of mouth. With a big expanding uh, gullet that it can like eat all those huge fish and a blue looks like it has flying look like it's walking through the grain fields you can see the sky in the background kind of turning a little like it's the sunset or probably sunset you got the two buildings here a building over here it doesn't look like they're destroyed yet it looks like he's in good health and trying to protect his area it's a bird warrior with flash and flying and a two three flash creatures you may play if they were an instant so if someone's attacking and you had this mana you can go ahead and flash them out and block with them it's a two three creature very cool. Ooh, a zombie wall. This one is Moaning Wall. I think that this one is possibly a reprint. I don't remember. Very cool picture. Reminds me of Indiana Jones when he's in that one. Uh, walking in the sewer looking for information. And he runs against that wall of skeletons. And it kind of grabs him and pulls him in. I don't know. He grabs that, that girl's in that sewer and grabs her. And she runs in all the face of the skeletons. Very creepy when I was a kid very dark can't really see much around there you don't know how many people are there it looks like this person is kind of melding into the wall with all the other zombies could just imagine all those hands grabbing you no thanks two and a black zombie wall defender so they can't attack and it's a zero five so quite a bit of defense and uh, cycling is two just two generic so if you have this card in your hand and you want to cycle it discard this card and draw another very cool this is what is this ambuscade this is an instant. It looks like uh, the dog is riding the crocodile with very interesting like feelers on his nose or something like that, or antennae. Looks like they get in the way of his eyes or something like that. But then again, I am not an alligator optometrist. This is a two and a green. Looks like he's riding the gator, holding those as like reins or something like that. Who knows why he's holding them? Who knows what he's doing and what he's trying to gain from that? If it was me, I'd just walk by the gator instead of jump on it. Especially one that big that could just gobble him up. This is an instant. Target creature control gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature and opponent controls. So it'll pay two and a green. Uh, your creature gets plus one attack. And it will deal damage to another creature that they control. Cool. So you can get an easy kill. Ooh, a zombie bird. This is a carrion screecher. This is a three and a black. Looks like some sort of human... This looks like some sort of human-bird hybrid, and uh, 
Looks like there's blood and something like that. Reminds me kind of a of a turkey vulture. Got kind of long fingernails. He's got like an arm set and also a wing set, but the wings are kind of decayed and doesn't look like he can fly. But then again, he might have some powers or something like that. And it does have fly. Looks like he almost had like a ritual site or something like that. Very dark background. Looks like the end of the world. Uh, his shadow's there. Sun's over here. Or fire's over here. See like an obelisk there. That honestly looks like he put someone's head there and chop it off and the blood would flow there. Very dark feeling. The banished have come to home to roost. This is a 3-1. Cool. And it's flying. We got the gilded cordon again. Got the feral prowler. Looks like a cat who stole the leg of a person. Interesting eyes. Got like little slashes, little white slashes running through them. Kind of looks like a malnourished cat. That's why he's probably eating the leg of that person. And he's fighting for it. So one in a green, got the sun sitting in the background, the city, some battle happened, and the cat's just running out to grab what food he can. A little bit of a goatee going on. Got some big little teeth, interesting pointy ears. Uh, the shading on this cat is unbelievable. You can really see every single, like, just ripple of the cat. Really like it. The tail's in the front, and it just, you can follow his body to his angry head, and then you notice the foot. And something green in the background, which is probably with the mana. Interesting. It's a creature cat. When Pharaoh Prowler dies, draw a card. It's in a 1 3. So it's got a bit of defense, a little bit of attack, and uh, that makes more sense. No one wants to go up against an angry cat, especially if you see one eating a foot. <laughs> and uh, if it dies, you draw a card. Very cool. Okay, this is the desert. Land desert. Interesting. So if you have one of these in your deck, in your graveyard or deck, this is what some of those cards call on for having a desert. Desert of in indomitable and a very interesting like it's a cobra head or something very egyptian almost reminds me of the sphinx or something like that got beautiful water the sunset the sky is beautiful dark over here the sun setting there a little bit of green in his eyes and you can see that that's standing up after how many years or whatever devastation's happening beautiful picture love the river beautiful desert of indomitable enters the battlefield tapped Tap, add green to your mana pool, and it has cycling cost of one and a green. Discard this card, draw a card. So it enters tapped. So it's a kind of a slow land, but it also has cycling. If like if you have this card in your hand and you're like, I already have enough mana, I would have enough green mana out, I would like to discard this card and draw a card. And if you put this in your graveyard, it will also trigger some of those that say if you need a desert in your graveyard. Very cool. On to the uncommons crook of condemnation this is a two it looks like he's stealing something from him trying to take like his talisman or something maybe the magical power it looks like this poor guy's fallen extremely ripped got like a little bit of armor here here but not over the heart or anything that's probably why they passed and uh it is an artifact for two artifact one and tap exile target creature from graveyard one exile crook of condemned condemnation Actual are cards from all graveyards. So if you want to pay uh, one and tap, XL card from a graveyard, your graveyard or the others, if someone has like an annoying card in there or something, you don't want them to bring it back, go ahead and do that. Or if you want to uh, pay one and XL this card, get rid of all cards from all graveyards. Kill a dredge deck, kill anything like that. Very cool, and it's an artifact. Interesting, looks like he's taken away the artifact. So it's like the graveyard card, get rid of it. Next we got... Merciless Eternal. Looks like some clerk. Yeah, some zombie clerk. Very dark energy coming out from him. Looks like the land is molten lava run on fire. Interesting cape. Things hanging off of him. Looks like he's creating winds. You can see the energy. A lot of the same symbol of like the horns. He's wearing it around his neck or his dress. And it's a two and a black. It's a zombie clerk that's a two two creature and has a flick two. Afflict is uh, whenever this creature becomes blocked, defending player loses two life. So the number after afflict equates to the number of life lost. So cool. If he's blocked, the other person loses two life and he's two strength. So regardless, they'll lose two life if he makes it through or gets blocked. And two and a black, discard this card. Merciless is eternal. Gets discard a card. Merciless eternal gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So if you really want to boost him and you have some cards in your hand that you want to get rid of, if you wanted to, you could pay, honestly, six mana. And he'll get plus four, plus four, making him a six six, which is cool. This is Nami Clerk. Another one of these double cards. We got Claim, which is a one black. Return target creature card with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Oh, that's 
a really good card actually. It reminds me of Untomb, but it is uh, one less. So you can throw out a good creature actually for quite a relatively cheap cost uh, from a rare to the battlefield, especially if it has a good ability that's a low, uh, low mana cost. Awesome, I really like that. Looks like uh, he's getting ready to get his surgery performed, or I mean, embalming performed, remove the brain through the nose and all that, like you've heard about how they wrapped up the mummies. Cool picture. Very ceremonial looking. Got his, like, scepter there. Very cool. Burying him with all his belongings. And got the sage burning or whatever. Very cool. And this one is flame. One and a red. And it has aftermath. Cast this spell only from your graveyard, then exile it. Target creature gets plus two plus zero and gains haste until end of turn. Oh, so that's kind of cool. If you play this card, if you have a black, then this goes to your graveyard. And then you could play this from your graveyard. Cast the spell only from your graveyard. I wish it had the little gray symbol next to it, like it did in the Odyssey sets, to let you know uh, that you're able to cast it from your graveyard. I really like that. Looks like I got a mythic. This is the Scorpion God. Oh wow, the Scorpion King. Isn't that a movie? Related to the mummy. This is a three, a black, and a red. It is a multicolored creature, a legendary creature, gosh, a god. And it looks like a very dark, he's giant. You can see the people running. There's fire. He's got his huge spike tail on the back. He's got hands uh, that kind of resemble claws and pincers, but still, you don't want to mess with him. And uh, yeah, you don't want to shake that out of your foot, out of your boot in the morning or anything like that. Looks like he's busting through this wall. Everyone's running, ready to cause a ruckus. Whenever a creature with a 1-1 counter on it dies, draw a card. And it says 1, black, and red. Put a 1-1 counter on another target creature. So if you pay a bunch of those, you can put a bunch of negative 1-1 counters on creatures, kill that creature effectively, and then you draw a card for each of that. And when Scorpio of Do of, uh, the Scorpion God dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Interesting. So you get a keep playing it if no one exiles it and it's a 6-5 for only a 5 mana cost but it's also a black and a red really like that oh cool I got a zombie wall and I got a foil zombie wall I really like the old foils better but this is nice you can see kind of a prism effect see all the rainbow colors in it really cool really cool then we got I'm just gonna start a pile for the foils as well mythics got this one a land and a zombie jackal warrior. Well, this is an interesting token. Haste when Earthshaker enters the enters the battlefield, target a creature with power less than equal to Earthshaker or counter. Uh, power can't block this turn. Interesting. Very cool. Alright, put this in my token lot. Now we're on to the next pack. It looks like we got a picture of some sort of bug. Wow, that definitely reminds me of the mummy of those bugs that crawled under people's skin and ate them. Man, those were the worst parts of that movie. Looks like you can see his skeleton, his bones. I wonder how his m arms move, maybe with magic. And also looks like he has some sort of snake body and a bug head, unless that's a mask. Interesting, interesting. Maybe his head can come off and just crawl around. Wild, wild. Looks like there's also something flying up there. Hm. All right, all right. To the next one. This one is Kenra Scrapper. Looks like a jackal warrior, a two and a red. He looks like he's chasing flamingos down or something like that. Beautiful birds, by the way. Supposedly they get their pink color from eating shrimp, but when they're babies, they don't have that color. It grows on them from their food diet, I believe, and also from the supposed milk or whatever that the parents regurgitate back in their mouth. Fun fact. Uh, looks like he's got like uh, blades on his arm, so you don't want to mess with him. He's got some banners or like, uh, I guess little ribbons hanging off of him to show his presence. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it looks like uh, pictures on a wall. The wall looks broken in the city, very sandy. And I'm not sure if he's chasing those guys or just running and they're just in the background. Very detailed face, interesting armor, almost like samurai armor, I would say. I would love to see samurai cards come back with Bushido, one of my favorite mechanics. Lovely picture. It is a jacket of war with menace. Uh, you may exert Kenrod Scrapper as it attacks. When you do, it gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. An exerted creature won't untap during your next untap set. And it's a two three. Cool. So if you exert it, uh, it gets plus two plus zero and becomes a four three for a two and a red. Cool, cool, cool. Looks like we have 
wrong pile. A tragic lesson. Looks like the poor huge crane creature passed away. There's lots of very colorful blood, different colors. Interesting, everyone is falling to their knees. Looks like this is a very important person. They fell in some sort of temple. I can't really tell what happened. Doesn't look like there's much else ruckus. It looks like these people are just around him and he fell. Or something happened. It is a two and a blue. You can see the lightness over here kind of hitting this person and it gets dark over here. Very sad, these people, and she's just praying. It's an instant. Draw two cards and discard a card. Unless you return a land you control to its owner's hand. So if you draw two cards and you don't want to discard one, take a land, put it back in your hand. Yeah, very cool, interesting picture, very bloody though. This next one is Active Heroism, one we got already. Very cool. We got to Torment of Venom. Very, very busy, beautiful picture. Looks like some crazy, the scorpion god. Looks like this guy is attacking. That's what I would say. You can see his nice little stinger there coming down. Everyone's running away, literally causing ruckus. Love all the colors, some greens down here. You can see the fire or molten or whatever there. And it's just chaos. You can see sparks of the flame flying into the air, dark. And then out of the top right corner, you can see the pincer coming down. Maybe to hit these poor fellows right there. Is a two and two black instant. Put three negative one negative one counters on target creature. Its controller loses three lives unless he or she sacrifices another land land permanent or discards a card. So it puts some pressure on them. If it could kill a creature, especially like one uh, like one with indestructible or something like that, because they're negative one negative one counters, and they would also lose three life unless they decide to sacrifice another non land permanent or discard a card. So it's an that's that's pretty cool. Interesting art, and this is by Joanne Bowden. Cool. We got the snake eye again, the sidewinding naga. We got a lethal sting. Lots of venom in this one. You can tell that it's like just glowing with the red. I mean, with the green. <laughs> And uh, this guy is just cowered against the corner. His sword is not really in front of him. I mean, it is, but it's also down. And his hand's against the wall. Like, he is just backed in the corner and has nowhere to go. He's got fear on his face, quite scared. If only they wore armor that protected them in their chest and everywhere instead of just to look cool. Maybe they'll upgrade their armor. Looks like this nasty spike or tongue or whatever that is, is Stinger's going to get him. Very sad, you can really see the fear on his face. The light is shining through right on his face, accentuating it, while everything else is dark. Doesn't look good for him. Two and a black, it's an additional cost to cast lethal sting. Put a negative one, negative one counter on a creature you control, and destroy target creature. Not that good of a card, I would say, because you get to put a negative one, negative one counter on a creature you control, which is not something I would do, and destroy target creature. I'd rather just use like a murder or something. Hmm. But cool art. Looks like we got a land, another desert land, Desert of the Fervent. Looks like another, like, Jekyll thing, um, very dark, kind of red. Looks like pools of blood or something like that. I think that's a bird there, maybe like a vulture picking up the scraps. Very shadowy, a little bit of light coming through. Lots of reds down here, very dark scene. And this is just like the big building there. Who knows what goes on there, can't be anything good. Ugh. Desert of the Fervent enters the battlefield tapped. Add one to your mana pool, and then you call the cycle this card for one in red. Cool. Got a Naga Clerk. Seer of the Last Tomorrow. Two in a blue. Naga Clerk. Uh, blue and a tap. Discard a card. Target player puts the top three cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. And it's a 1-4. Okay, so uh, you can really get through someone's deck if you keep doing this every turn. Pay a blue and tap three cards from their library into their graveyard. Hopefully they don't have anything to bring it back, but still, you're just dwindling down their card selection. And it uh, looks like some sort of wombat or something, I don't even know what kind of creature that is, and it has its hand against the wall. You can see this like dream catcher is like leaking energy, or this wind chime. Uh, very light here, dark here, you can see some of the, like, the hieroglyphics etched in the wall. It's definitely doing something kneeling down, got a cool amulet. Very nice, like uh, like the colors and the contrast. Very cool. Got a graven abomination, a whore. 
That's something right out of Pan's Labyrinth, it looks like. It looks like it's got a creepy little old medical mask where they used to put, like, good-smelling leaves and spices in to presumably protect them from the Black Plague in Italy. Um, a nice sun hitting his back, very shiny here. And uh, over here is very red. Lots of red in this theme, but, I mean, you could tell by the box that it's going to be quite fiery, quite bad. Looks like this guy is just walking around tombs. You can see the only symbol etched here are the horns. So you know it's got to be bad. It's an artifact creature horror. That's a 3-1 three, for 3. Whenever a grave abomination attacks, exile target card from defending player's graveyard. So if he attacks, you get to remove a card from someone's graveyard, from your opponent. Or, yeah, very cool. And he's got nasty horns on his back. He can't really itch his back without hurting himself. And even with those claws, I don't think he'd want to. This is a... Uh, steadfast Sentinel looks like someone who's uh, just a warrior blocking this area came to protect it She's got an interesting like horn thing with the horns as well. The horns are everywhere It's a huge symbol in this thing the set this everything three and a white human clerk That's a two three has vigilance so it doesn't have to tap to attack Always like vigilance so you can block on your next turn and this is eternalized which is four and two white It's quite expensive. So hopefully it's good Excel this card from your graveyard, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 4-4 black zombie human clerk with uh, no mana cost, eternalized only as a sorcery. sorcery. So you get to turn this card uh, into a black zombie human clerk, quite a lot of creature types, and 0 mana cost, and it's 4-4 instead of a 2-3, and it should have still vigilance because it's a copy of it. She looks very serious. Looks like she's willing to stay there with her life. You can just see people carrying their goods past them. And uh, she's just protecting them. You can see the pyramids in the background. They have the horns on it because they're trying to appease that so far fi that self-called pharaoh god, which I believe is turning their back on him. This was his imaginary threats. Got to be a blue card, and it is. Two and two blue. Looks like this bat creature is attacking something that isn't there. Not sure what that is, like a foot or something. It's got like an interesting magical attack. Maybe that's just how fast he's doing. It's actually tearing the wind apart. And I'm not sure if that's a separate arm or just his wings. Maybe he should fly away. He's got a really mean look on his face. He's got interesting little six like feelers on the top of his head. Kind of uh, the art is situated this way. I like it. Oh, that's just his foot. But it looks like something hit his foot. Uh, looks like he's in some sort of building. The light's kind of bleeding through here, dark here, and he's fighting something invisible. Uh, instant. Uh, creatures target opponent controls attack this turn if able, so they have to attack. During that player's next untap step, creatures here control does not untap, and it's got cycling for two if you don't like it. You can uh, discard this card and draw another if you pay two. So um, they, their opponent's creatures must attack if able to, and uh, their next untap step, uh, they're unable to untap, so they're open to attack. Or they're open to attack. Very cool. An element. Got a blood water entity. Looks like some sort of bird. Uh, very interesting. Looks like... I'm not sure if that's like a waterfall hitting him, a blood waterfall, or that's just evaporating off of him. It is a 1, a blue, and a red for a 2-2 two, two flying creature with prowess. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, that creature gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. When Blood Watcher Entity enters the battlefield, you may put target instant or sorcery card from a graveyard on top of your library. Cool. So if you have a cool card in a graveyard that's an instant or sorcery, put it on top of your library so you can draw it next time. Or if not, you don't have to. And uh, Love Creatures of Flying. Very interesting art. Definitely don't want to see that flying towards you. Interesting purples, interesting blues. Very like mysterious, kind of covered in fog. This is an uncommon. Looks like we got a sand straggler. Almost looks like an nah, that Pokemon or something with a spiky back. Three and uh, a red. Looks like this is a like a tomb or something. The statue of the person, his arms broke off and it's sinking into the sand. He's kind of pushing the sand, attacking it. You can see lightning in the background. Looks like he's almost walking on two legs at points. And he's got a very pointy nose, feel like it'd be a way of his vision. But looks like he's doing it. It's a creature beast for a three and a red, that's a three three creature. When Sand Straggle enters the battlefield, if you control a desert or there is a desert card in your graveyard, you may have Sand Straggler deal three damage to target creature. So if he enters the battlefield and you have a desert card in your graveyard or desert on the battlefield, three damage instantly, lightning bolt to 
target creature only. But cool. And is this the rare? It looks like this is the rare. This is the hollow one. Very mummy. Doesn't look like he have arms or anything. Looks like he's just like the casing which they covered him in. When he's buried and his body's gone, but his soul and spirit's still there, fighting for it. Very broken down city. Like the weight of the picture, you can see the three over here, this one over here. Everything's about to tip over. It is a five cost card. Artifact creature golem. <coughs> Excuse me. Hollow one only costs two less to catch for each card you cycle or discard this turn. And has a cycling cost of 2-2. Two, two. Discard this card, draw a card. It's a 4-4 four, four creature, that's 5. So, uh, if you cycled at least one card, uh, it would only cost 3. If you cycle two cards, it would cost 1. If you cycle three cards, boom, you can just play him. Very cool, very interesting. He's got a mean look on his face, even though I think that's just his death mask. And he looks like a pharaoh or something. Got a full art island, which is cool. I wasn't sure if they give out full arts, but I guess they do. Hmm. Interesting. This is a token of some sort, and then on to the next one. This is Dauntless Avian, and it looks like someone's flying in the air. Bird head. Got like a crazy little weapon in his hands, beautiful wings. Looks like he's trying to hold up this thing from falling on the people, so he's a hero. Looks like the city's just under crazy chaos. You got this dog person barking, or maybe just a dog, but he's at the same level, so it's probably one of those dog people. And this guy's looking at something. You know something's coming. He's also looking at the same thing. Smoke and dust everywhere. The city's just crumbling, and they're trying to do everything to save it. Two and a white creature bird warrior flying. Whenever Dauntless Avian attacks, untap target creature you control. It's a 2-1. So interesting. If he attacks, you can untap a target creature you control. And flying is also fun. This one was Blur of Blades. He must attack really, really fast. It's an instant. A 1 and a red. He's got two weapons in his hands. Looks like he's slashing apart some zombies or something like that. See the fire from the city in the background. Very dark. Very evil look on her face, I believe, actually. And she's just kicking butt. It almost looks like a baboon or something. <laughs> this is an instant. Put a one negative one negative one counter on target creature. Blur of blades deals two damage to that creature's controller. So you get to put a negative one negative one counter on a creature. If it's a one one, it dies. If it's a two two, it's a one one now. And it deals two damage to that creature's controller. So I'll also get two damage. Not bad. This one is unquenchable thirsts. That's interesting. Kind of reminds me of. Uh, Constantine the movie where that guy can't find anything to quench his thirst. It looks like the water is turning into sand when it hits his mouth, which is pretty much a nightmare and you wouldn't last long. It almost looks like the clouds are swirling around him, the sun's still there beating on him while all the clouds are there, heating him up, making him real thirsty when all he can drink is sand, and that's not healthy. This is one in a blue, enchantment aura, enchanted creature. When Unquenchable Thirst enters the battlefield, if you control a desert or there's a desert card in your graveyard, tap Enchanted Creature. Enchanted Creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. So you could put a block on a creature and it won't untap unless they have like an Icy Manipulator or something else to untap it. Very cool. Alright, sorry my camera just died for a second. I'm gonna plug it in for a little while. Alright, back onto it. This is the Lurching Rot Beast. Looks like some zombie mammoth. His tusks are facing down. Maybe they just decayed so much and flipped around because there was nothing holding them in. He's got no nose, no trunk. Got a very evil look. Tiny little beady gold eyes. Almost looks like he was wrapped up like a mummy and put in a tomb or something. And I guess everything dead is just arising. Probably because of this guy right here in the back. This is a three and a black a zombie beast with a cycling for just one black. Discard this card, draw a card. It's a four-two creature for a three cost. Just a just a nice little creature. Cool looking too. We got a frilled sandwalla. It is a one green. He's got like almost like a green glow to him. It looks like he's standing on some hieroglyphic writing right there. I'm not sure if that's tiny writing or he's just huge. Is a creature lizard that's just a 1-1. I'm guessing he's a little guy because he's one green. 
and it has one and a green frilled sand wall it gets plus two plus two until end of turn activates his ability only once each turn so you can only make him a three three with this ability so you can't just stack it and make him like a like a seven seven or something like that very cool I uh, got like a very nice sky in the background see a pyramid over there and he's just standing kind of looking off into the just into the ether looking for a bug or something to eat cool reminds me of Jurassic Park with those like the parts of his like head that just make spread out to make him look bigger and intimidate predators or something like that very cool looks like we got the torment of venom this is that one card I got again that looks like uh, the scorpion god is attacking the whole place poor people this is gift of strength looks like he's holding up some huge weapon and it's just giving him some power and I'm not sure if it was he found it in the sand and that sand falling off of it or that's just the heat creating water vapor in the air to just dense up it is one in a green which is interesting I thought it might be one in a white looking at the picture and it's got like uh, the desert scape in the background it looks like he's in the middle of nowhere pick that up and hopefully he was looking for that to save the day and he's got an interesting oh he's a jackal creature cool it's an instant target creature gets plus three plus three and gains reach until end of turn that makes sense he can reach the flying creatures with that thing so he gets quite strong your creature if you put this on him and uh, reach until the end of turn to block a flyer cool this is clash through one red looks like these guys are just uh busting through a window or something like that i'm not sure if that's a bow or that's just a huge one of those like scimitars not a scimitar like a scythe or something and he's got a big one right here you can see some of the debris still popping out very you can see the depth in this picture interesting talisman on them interesting armor um yeah they look like they're about to cause some business right now it is a one red sorcery creatures you control gain trample until end of turn and draw a card so it's a card draw and your creatures all of them will gain trample very cool but it's a sorcery if it's an instant be a lot better but still very cool if you're attacking go ahead play it give me all your creatures trample i like it looks like we got okitra's avenger looks like some shield or something there it looks like a giant lawn dart or something with like very big fins in the back of spear usually i've never seen a spear that have like fins on it but i guess it will help with aerodynamics looks like uh, there's a building over here or a monolith almost looks like the ceiling is kind of floating on it some magic going on she's about to throw that at something kind of mean look in her face and she's not ready to back down one in a white creature human warrior that's a three one uh what you may exert Okitra's Avenger as it attacks. When you do, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to it this turn. Exerted creature won't untap during your next untap step. So, if it attacks, you prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to it if you exert it, but it won't untap next turn. Cool, that's what the barrier's for. And uh, very beautiful colors in it. I gotta say, the colors that they uh, have now in the cards are beautiful uh, for the computer art. I believe they draw it on like a pad or something. Very cool though. We got a strategic planning. Looks like uh, Jace and uh, Gideon sitting down and talking. It is one in a blue. You can see that they're getting close to something. Looks like the tomb of him or whatever that is. You can just always see the huge horns in the background. And they're sitting, thinking, getting real close to each other, kneeling down and whispering what they're going to do. Really like it. The dark uh, blues and like the golds over here. Very high contrast. Beautiful clouds. And you can see the the sun just reflecting off of that. It's a sorcery. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. So you get to check out the top three cards of your library. And pick out the best one. Put it in your hand and the rest in your graveyard. Not bad. Ooh, this is a beautiful one. This is a sifter worm. Very beautiful colors. Looks like he's breaking through the whole city. The whole town. Just like how small the tree is compared to him. Like it's nothing. He just looks blind and he's just rummaging around mashing. His Some of his teeth are everywhere. You don't want to go in there. It's a 5 and 2 green. And I can't get over these colors. They're beautiful. You just see the, the immense power he has breaking through this stuff. Probably like it's nothing. Trying to find whatever he wants. It is a trample for a 7-7, seven, seven. so it's a 7 mana cost for 7-7 seven, seven with trample. When Sifter Worm enters the battlefield, scry 3. So check out the 3 top cards of your library. And uh, gain life equal to the card's converted mana cost. 
Oh, that's pretty cool. You gain quite a bit of life if you have some high-cost mana cards in your deck, especially if you have a bunch of worms. So for this card, you gain 7 life. That's pretty cool. I like it. The next one we got is Saving Grace. Looks like this clerk or someone is picking up this wounded soldier and is healing him. You can see where uh, the healing aura is going. It's going to his leg, to his head, his arm, and his side. Something grave happened to him. This person looks extremely powerful. The amulet is definitely doing the magic. You can see lightning and everything, almost like a tornado earthquake, just breaking apart the town behind them. Uh, very ominous skies, very dark. And, uh, yeah, crazy scene. They're healing that person. Hopefully they make it. One and a white. Enchantment aura. It's flash, so you can play it whenever you can play an instant. Enchanted creature you control. Uh, when saving grace enters the battlefield, all damage that would be dealt this turn to you and permanent you control is dealt to enchanted creature instead. Enchanted creature gets plus zero, plus three. So send all the damage that will be done to you and creatures to just one. And hopefully it will survive. And if not, it will be a nice little blocker. The next card I got is Ominous Sphinx. It is a 3 and 2 blue. Almost looks like an owl head or something like that. Almost looks like a chimera as well. And uh, you can see again the huge towers and all this in the background breaking. Very blue looking sky. Very beautiful. Love the lighting. Looks quite furry. I love the ride on the back of it. Uh, I like the rock up front. Very nice foreground. Then you can just see his hand. Then it leads to his giant wings. And you can just see his face with like power emanating from his eyes. Creature Sphinx with flying. That's a 4-4 four, four for 3 and 2 blue. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, target creature and opponent controls gets negative 2, negative 0 until end of turn. So reduce some of the attack, hopefully saving your creatures or making them uh, a lot weaker and hopefully not dealing you as much damage. Beautiful card. This is the rare. This is Haz Hazoret's uh, Undying Fury. Is this card of Undying? No, it's a sorcery. 4 and 2 red. Looks like this zombie guy is very powerful got a very interesting like i guess staff with the two horn points at the end of it of course beautiful sky in the background small little albus there with the horns on it this one's big you can see the cracks everything is just decaying in this city beautiful robe and uh very powerful you can just see it love the shadow in the background uh there's something huge there you can see just projecting onto him and he's standing it protecting his ground not turning his back to this giant creature shadow there it is a sorcery Shuffle your library out and then exile the top four cards. You may cast any number of non-land cards with converted mana cost five or less from among them without paying their mana cost. Lands you control don't untap during your next untap step. Hmm. Shuffle your library, exile the top four cards. So just get rid of the top four cards if you shuffle it. You may cast any number of non-land cards. Oh, so uh, those four cards that you exile, you may look at them. If they have mana cost five or less, throw them onto the battlefield. But the lands you control, do not untap next turn. We got a mountain. And then a zombie token. Cool. Alright, I'm on to the next pack. Looks like uh, there is the planeswalker in the front of it. Hopefully we get the planeswalker in this one. That'd be pretty cool. This first card is open fire. Let me just adjust the camera a bit. It is a two and a red. It looks like some sort of goblin balloon brigade card or something like that. It looks like this giant shark thing or something. Oh, it's uh, actually a jackal. It kind of reminds me of James and Giant Peach, that shark that comes out. It looks like uh, that one warrior with a big uh, arrow or spear threw it and then hit it, and it's burning and about to crash into the ground. It looks like there's a trail of the smoke or either the magic that's repelling it going through. You can see the tops of uh, the well-balanced beams. wonder how they got up there. Pretty cool. And uh, this is an instant open fire deals three damage to target creature or player, and it's a it's not a lightning bolt, but it's all right. It's a three cost for three damage to creature or player. But lightning bolt is still miles ahead of it. A cool art, and I wonder how long that this thing will land. I mean, will fly. It's gotta fall soon. Next card I have are countervailing winds. It looks like uh, this bird creature is putting a smet like. Swept, fla flapping its wings extremely hard, putting up this barrier, blocking all the arrows from hitting it. Beautiful colors in there. You can see all the arrows uh, just snapping and not even coming close to him. And he's very blue. Lots of like blue creatures in this set. A beautiful mountain scheme in the background. He's quite high up in the air. Those archers are quite good to be able to 
hit get them near it and he just stops it like it's nothing and it also looks like he has some sort of armor on his wings which would make you quite heavy but impressed you can fly it's two and a blue and instant counter target spell unless his controller plays one for each card in your graveyard in cycling two so it's uh it's a counter spell that has cycling and it counters any spell unless they pay for one for each card in your graveyard and if you have a bunch of cards in your graveyard there's a good chance they won't be able to afford it and uh, it's a little bit expensive for counter spell but still pretty cool and very nice picture by the way love the sunset in this set love them Got another Sandblast, very brutal looking picture. Got another Moaning Wall, the zombie wall. Got a Bitter Bow Sharpshooter, looks like some jackals are standing there. Uh, they're protecting the last part of the well, like this part of the city is quite well off looking. That's a huge guy, that's another huge guy. The horns are everywhere, you see the horns uh, right there at the end of their bow. And uh, they're protecting the city. Very nice greens in the sky. Very interesting. It'd be pretty cool if you see greens in the sky. Unless you go see the Aurora, Aurora Borealis. I doubt that you'll see it. Uh, you'll see greens in the sky regularly. This is four and a green. Uh, this is a Jackal Archer. I'm sure they have reach. They have vigilance and reach. And it's a four four. So they don't need to tap to attack. And they can block flyers. Which is cool. And there's two of them. Very cool. Got another Torment of Venom. Got a cunning survivor. Looks like he's riding down a piece of rubble down this hill, about to hit them with his hatchet. Uh, just crazy, absolutely crazy. These guys are extremely scared, but not him. He's just going at it, knowing that he needs to fight. It's a one in a blue human creature warrior, and it's a one three. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, stunning savior gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. It can't be blocked this turn. So if you cycle a lot of cards, which there's quite a bit of cycling cards in this deck, uh, he'll get plus one, plus zero, and can't be blocked, which is cool. So you hit him for two damage. And uh, interesting picture, very beautiful armor, greens, blues, brights, neons, very cool. Definitely stand out, you know which side you're on. You're fighting against the rotten flesh zombies slash mummies. Cool. Got another desert. Got a survivor's encampment. You see the horns in the background. Looks like makeshift tents because that's all that's left of the city. Uh, beautiful sunset. You see a couple birds flying in the sky. Really like how they're there. Kind of offsets everything. And uh, yeah, not many people around. Kind of looks like a sad image, but it's what they have to survive. It has tap, add a colorless to your mana pool. Tap and untap, tap, and then tap and untap creature you control. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So it doesn't come in tapped, it creates a, a colorless mana, and if you tap a creature you control, you'll add another mana mana color to your mana pool if you need it, which is pretty cool. Interesting picture, kind of sad vibes getting from it. Looks like we got Daru's uh, Reincarnation. Looks like this guy's using force field or something. You can see the bubble around him, pushing the dust and these two blue guys away, the blue man group, I'm assuming they're third member. One in a white, an instant tap up the two target creatures and has cycling cost of one uh, planes and that's discard this card draw another card hmm. so you just tap up the two target creatures and it's an instant so that's pretty cool stop some damage or if you want to get some damage through go ahead tap some creatures interesting those guys are extremely bright blue you can't really hide much with that Ooh, this one's pretty this is a uh, hash heap oasis that's a beautiful picture in the desert you see that you won't think it's a mirage Got this lone wanderer there, shadow, huge area, beautiful. Got some like palm trees and beautiful river. Just go jump in there, drink some of the water, hopefully catch a fish. And it looks like the water is just pouring out of this random little waterfall on the side of it. Who knows how it got there, but it's beautiful. You see desert just for miles in the background, and this just beautiful green lush land. That would save your life. And it's a land desert. Tap, add colors to your mana pool. Tap, pay one life, add green to your mana pool. So if you pay a life and tap it, You'll get a green, and it says one and two green tap, sacrifice desert, uh, a desert, so maybe this one or another one. Target creature gets plus three plus three until end of turn. Activate this ability only anytime you can cast a sorcery. So you can't do it anytime, only time you can cast a sorcery. Beautiful picture, and this guy found his little safe haven. Beautiful. Some more of these uh, two two-tone cards, I guess. Got a struggle, two and a red instant looks like these people are struggling in this battle looks like the ground itself is falling and they're falling down they need to grab the edge and hopefully get up struggle deals damage a target creature equal to number of lands you control so you've got a bunch of lands go ahead pay two in a red do damage equal to the number of lands 
Then we also got a survive, one in a green, sorcery as aftermath. This person looks like uh, the rubble is falling down on top of her, and she's still getting up. Very strong, very brave, and intense. Looks like they fell down the hole, and she's getting up. I believe that that's the same. That's that person right there. She fell down, and she's getting up. She survived. Each player shuffles his or her graveyard into his or her library. Cool, so if a creature died, they got a chance to come back out. Next card we got is a Sun Scourge Champion. Looks like they got flame whips, kind of devilish looking eyes, some gold beads around his neck, and uh, very interesting. Uh, very blurred picture, so you know they're moving very fast. The whips, looks like they're in some sort of temple or something. Not sure what that is in the background. Don't think it's a sun, maybe a big gem. And it's a human wizard for two and a white. Creature human wizard. When Sun Scourge Champion enters the battlefield, you gain life equal to its power. So you gain two life. And eternalize two and two white. Discard a card. So you pay two and two white. Discard a card. Discard a card. Exile this this card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a four four black zombie human wizard. No no mana cost. Internalize only as a sorcery. So discard a card. Pay four. You can bring this back to four four black zombie human wizard. Cool. Next card I got is. Uh, Buntu's Last Reckoning. Got like a crocodile creature. He's huge. He's just like screaming, blowing people away. He's absolutely giant. Got a guy in his grip, in his grisp. Poor guy. You can just see the town folks are like rebelling against him, trying to get him down. But this person has power and looks like he's not going to give up without a fight. One and two black. It's a sorcery. Destroy all creatures. Lands you control. Don't untap during your next untap step. So it's a board cleaner for all creatures, get rid of them all, unless they have um, indestructible, and lands you control, don't untap during your next untap step, so it might slow you down a little bit, but if you really need to clean the board, go ahead, and then, cool, got some, a foil rare, got wild fife, wildfire eternal, three and a red, beautiful foil, very reflective, very shiny, looks like a bull, no, jackal creature, interesting, like, like, wind or magic power it looks like blue hot fire in the background it's kind of hard to tell with the shine it looks like he's almost around lava fires around him it's a creature zombie jackal clerk that's a three and a red that was only a one four and has affliction four whenever this creature becomes blocked by defending player uh defending player loses four life so that's a bit of life they lose and whenever wildfire eternal attacks and isn't blocked you may cast an instant or sorcery card from hand without causing without paying its mana cost. So if your instance and sorcery is in your deck, this card could be great. So if it's attack if it attacks and isn't blocked, boom, instant and sorcery, you get to pay play for free. Beautiful foil by the way. And you got a swamp. Oops. Mixing up the piles. Alright, on to the next one. Looks like a camel. Got a solitary camel. You got the, the sun is always in between there, almost like it's some sort of astrological sign or something like that. Pyramids in the corner, beautiful sunset. Camel in the foreground, huge hump. How do you ride that? Just hug it. I did ride a camel once. They are quite cool. Um, very long necks, and very dark, shadowy picture. But you can definitely see it's a camel, and he's just hanging out in the desert by himself, with no one around. Two in a white. That's a three-two creature. Solitary camel has lifelink as long as you control a desert, or there is a desert card in your graveyard. Damage dealt by this creature also causes you to gain that much life. So if you do 3 damage, you gain 3 life. Or if you do 3 damage to a creature, you gain 3 life. Very cool, lifelinks is always a very great ability. Cool picture by the way, very beautiful oranges and yellows for the sunset. Got another open fire. Got another tragic lesson. Got a uh, Ronas uh, Stalwart looks like this person grabbed the piece of the fallen city super strong is just about to swing it at something always the city is crumbling in this but it did say that the person was going to bring destruction to the city when in a green human warrior that's a 2-2 creature you may exert uh, Ronas Stalwart as it attacks when you do it gets plus one plus one until end of turn and can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less this turn so one on tap, but if a creature two or less is out, they'll get plus one, plus one, and they can't block it. Or if you just want to, make it a three, three, and other creatures can block it. Very cool. 
Ooh, got a Minotaur Warrior, Grizzly Survivor. Looks like he fought all of the zombies with this crazy three spiked axe thing. Very dark scene, very dark. I like it. A bunch of skeleton piles there, and he's just standing on top of it, screaming his war cry. The ominous city in the background, slight light over there. Beautiful picture, beautiful art. Two and a black creature, Minotaur Warrior. That's a 2 3 creature. Whenever you cycle or discard a card, Grizzly Survivor gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. Cool, so he gets some strength if you cycle and become a 4 3. Got another Rampaging Hippo. Got a Thorned Molich. Two in the red. Big spiky lizard. Supposedly those spiky lizards that you see in real life. When water hits them anywhere in their body, uh, the little channels on their back uh, flow the water all the way into their mouth. Which is really good when they're in the desert. Looks like he's standing on this guy looking around, seeing if it's safe to eat him. Poor guy right there. Uh, nice mountainscape there. Then this left side, give it some weight so you kind of look at here. You see the city and flames in the background. Creature lizard with powers. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, the creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Uh, Thorned Mulach has first strike as long as it's attacking. It's a 2 2. So if it's attacking, it will always deal the damage first. And if you cast a spell that's non creature, it will become plus one plus one. So if you cast more than one, it could get multiple plus one plus ones. Cool. We got Without Weakness, another one of those blue uh, bone like people, like they came from the earth or something or they're getting revived who knows they might be fighting for the bad guy over there is a one in a black an instant target creature you control gets indestructible until end of turn very cool damage and effects that say destroy don't destroy if it's toughness is zero or less it's still put in the owner's graveyard so if it gets negative one negative one counters on it it still dies but things that say destroy don't kill it or damage or effects is don't kill it cycling for two cool Got another Cunning Survivor. Got another Traveler's Amulet. Got a Sinuous Striker. Looks like a Cobra person that has magic and bangles all over it. It's got like uh, some armor on it, a head wrap, and with some gold around it. Looks like it's in a temple or something that's not broken. It's a two and a blue Naga Warrior. It has one blue Sinuous uh, striker gets plus one, negative one until end of turn, so you can only do it twice without, I mean once without killing it, and eternalize. Three and two blue, discard a card, uh, discard a card, exile this creature from your graveyard, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a plus four, plus four black zombie naga warrior with no mana cost. So it'll become a four, four, you can do that option three times then. Cool. Interesting card, beautiful art. Got another double card. Got a peel, which is one green. Looks like uh, there's some rhinos pulling up. Uh... And I'm back. My camera keeps dying. Sorry about the random cuts. I'm on to the next card, which is a braid. It looks like a giant in the background of this like decrepit city. Kind of looks like it's crumbling again, just like most of the cards in this set. There's some interesting like blues and purples and reds in the sky over the mountain there, which I kind of like. And the sky looks really lengthy in the background, pretty much taller than all the mountains around him, which is pretty wild. This card is a one in a red. It's an instant, and it has choose one. A braid deals three damage to target creature, or destroy target artifact. So, it's sort of like a lightning bolt, but it's more expensive, and it only does damage to a creature, or you can destroy an artifact. And you can see how big he is compared to the small little people running away from him from the crumbling remains of the city in the background. Very beautiful sky and colors in it. And this one is drawn by Jonas DeRoe. And then the next card I have is uh, the Scrab God. This is a legendary creature god. Looks like he's got a big weapon above his head. He's got like the bug head on him and as you can see his bones and there's a whole bunch of people on all sorts of levels behind him just standing there. He kind of got light centralized around him in the back so you know that's the one you want to focus on. And uh, he's got an interesting head. He's got a six legged insect on him. Reminds me of the movie The Mummy. Those ones that crawled under your skin. Kind of gross. And this creature is at the beginning of your upkeep, upkeep each opponent loses X life when you scry X where X is the number of zombies you control. So, ooh, that's kinda cool. 
Every time it's your upkeep, each opponent loses X life and you scry X with the number of zombies you control. So you have four zombies, they lose X life and you scry, I mean they lose four life and you scry four times. It's a 5-5 five, five creature for three, a blue and a black. And if you pay two, a blue and a black, exile target creature card from your graveyard. From a graveyard, oh that's nice. Create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 4-4 four, four black zombie. So it copies its abilities, but it's also a 4-4 four, four black zombie. When Scrab, the Scarab God dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Wow, that's really awesome. This card's actually really good. So when it dies, it just goes to your graveyard, and then it gets returned to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. This is a really good card, actually. Cool. And then I got a Plains. And then a Proven Combatant. Go to put that in that pile. We only have four more packs left. Four. All right. The first card I got is Firebrand Archer. Looks like this woman has a bow and arrow and an arrow's on fire on it. Looks like she's standing on the city as it's falling. You can see some rubble around her in the sky. And some of the buildings in the background are falling. And she has a high, in high, uh, high spot that she's perched out on so she can rain down her arrows of fire on people. Pretty brutal. This is a one and a red. A creature archer. It probably has reach. Maybe not. It's a 2-1 creature. And whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Firebrand Archer deals 1 damage to each opponent. Hmm, cool. So if you cast an instant sorcery or anything that's non-creature, it'll deal 1 damage to each opponent. Cool, so if you cast multiple on each turns, they build on each other. The next card I got is Avian Reed Stalker, which is one I got before. This one I got is Disposal Mummy. Interesting, it looks like uh, one of those dogs It's wrapped in mummy and the one behind them is actually on fire sitting in like a big lantern or something like that just burning up very nice reds in the fire and you can see the mummy in front of him kind of like protecting him or something or actually maybe scared can't really see much emotion on his face because it's covered up by the wraps and you can see the beautifully like uh, I guess uh, supports of the building too very cool nice colors in this picture this one is drawn by Gabor Skazaz Skazazi. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that last name right, but it's alright. This is two and a white. This is a zombie jackal. That's what it is, it's a jackal. Uh, when Disposal Mummy enters the battlefield, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. It's a 3-2 creature for two and a white. So when he enters the battlefield, you get to exile any card from an opponent's graveyard. Just get rid of it. Very cool. I got... Uh, the lurching rot beast again, the zombie elephant pretty much, this tusks bent down. I got another frilled sand walla, interesting little lizard guy, some green green color on him. Got another survivor's encampment, kind of a sad picture, all the tents that are set up because their town's destroyed. Very sad. Got another Orkata's avenger, the one who threw the arrow. Very cool. Got another Thorned Moloch, and I got another Without Weakness, the Blue Ram guy. Looks like he has parts of himself breaking off and he might be deteriorating. I got a Doomfall, the first uncommon for this one. It looks like all these people are running away. It's, it looks like the towers around their city are falling and they don't want to be crushed. Very interesting picture in the foreground. You see the guy on the right right here just running as fast as he can. Same with all those people over there. You can see kind of the sun reflecting through these two pillars right here. But they're crumbling and falling down. And everyone's running away as the avalanche is happening. No one wants to get squashed. This is two and a black. It's a sorcery. It says choose one. Target opponent exiles a creature he or she controls. Target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose an online card from it. Exile that card. Oh, interesting. So either make them exile a creature they control, or they reveal their hand to you and you choose an online card from it and you exile that card. So if there's something annoying on the board, you can get rid of it. Or if you want to see what's in their hand and get rid of something, go ahead and use that. The next card I got is Resolute Survivors. It looks like uh, this woman and her two friends are 
protecting from something. The picture's at a little bit of an angle. They look pretty serious. They have some body armor on. She's got like two scimitars and that guy's got a sword and so does her friend over here. And they're looking at something trying to protect their city as it's crumbling into the earth. Got a one, a red and a white casting cost. They're human warriors. It is a 3-3 creature for 3 mana cost. You may exert resolute survivors as it attacks. It won't untap during your next untap step. Whenever you exert a creature, resolute survivors deals 1 damage to each opponent and you gain 1 life. Cool. So every time you exert something, this or any other cards I have it that you have on the field, it will deal 1 damage to your opponent and one to you gain 1 life. Pretty cool. This is a desert land, Dunes of the Dead. It looks like a sarcophagus is sticking out and it's cracked open and you can see a hand coming out of it. it. Looks like the mummy wants to come back to life. Another one over there, maybe brothers or something. Kind of looks like they're in a cave of some sort. Very red glow in the background. Not sure what this little blue thing is, maybe a, a lizard in the background. Nice shadow work coming off of there. Not sure if all these reds are from the sun or the fire or something like that. This is a land in a in slash desert. It says tap, add colors to your mana pool. And when Dunes of the Dead is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Cool. So it's a land that creates uh, a colorless, and when it's put into your graveyard, it creates a 2-2 black zombie token. The next card I got is the rare Torment of Hailfire. It's a big dragon, the guy in the box over there. And he's got like a purple energy in his hand and he's like throwing a bunch of meteors down. It looks like one struck right here. Really nice contrast between these purples and the really black background. I really like it. He's got this like random orb hanging in the middle of his horns over there. He's just huge if you can see. He's towering over the rubble of the city. Just creating like a rainfall of meteors. You definitely don't want to stand by that. This is X and 2 black to cast. It's a sorcery. It says, repeat the following process X time. Each opponent loses X loses 3 life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. So, if you paid 4 and 2 black, you repeat this 4 times. They lose 4 life times 3, so they lose 12 life. And that player sacrifices 4 non-land permanents or discards 4 cards. Very cool. A lot of damage for that one. I got a foil zombie. A cursed horde. Very cool. I really like this picture right now. His hand is way up front. It looks like he's grabbing the neck of whoever this is, and you can see it's actually the necklace around it. He's just pulling the person in and is about to eat them. It also looks like there's some locusts in the air around it. You got like a zombie snake person, a zombie, thought it really a head, a zombie jackal. Very cool, very interesting, pretty brutal. Is a three in a black. It's a creature zombie, and it's a three three creature. It has one in a black. Target attacking zombie gains indestructibly indestructibility until end of turn. Damage and effects that say destroy don't destroy. And if its toughness is zero or less, it's still put into the owner's graveyard. A lot of people have problems understanding how indestructibility indestructible works. But still, very cool card. Really like it. And you can give any zombie indestructible if you pay one in a black. Then I got an island. And then this random Hours of Devastation card right here. Alright, time to the next one. Hopefully we get a Planeswalker, that'd be pretty cool. This one is Active Heroism. I got this one before. This woman right here is protecting herself from two zombies, and uh, beautiful artwork in the background. You can see the city's just in distress, running around, trying not to get eaten. This next card is Puncturing Blow. Looks like this person right here is just running at a huge beast. And it looks like the beast actually got pierced in the heart with something, and there's like a bunch of snakes coming out of him. Pretty crazy. Looks like that guy's about to flop over dead. And, uh... You can see this guy right down there. Who knows if he's the one that caused it. But anyway, that guy doesn't look like he's about to live. This is 2 and 2 red. It's a sorcery. Puncturing blow. Deals 5 damage to target creature. If that creature would die this turn, exile instead. 
So for four, four mana, you can do a five damage to a target creature, and if it dies, exile it. This next card is Spellweaver, Spellweaver Eternal. It looks like a blue cobra creature. There's a lot of these like weird, really bright blue creatures in this that are maybe they come back from the dead. That's what it kind of looks like, and they all have like mummy garm on them. He's just in the desert, and it looks like he's shooting some crazy blue spell out of his hand. The, the blue spell's like on the right side, so that's the first thing you'll pick up. Then you'll follow it back to his arm and see he's just this big crazy snake creature. Definitely don't want to run into him in the dark. Really nice detail on all the rocks in the background as well. Really good depth. This is one in a blue. This is a creature Naga Zombie Wizard. It is a 2-1. It has prowess. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So if you cast any sorceries or instants or anything like that, it will gain some power. And it has a flick too. Whenever this creature becomes blocked, defending player loses two life. So if someone decides to block it, even if this creature dies, they'll lose two life. Pretty cool. We got these archers again. Ooh, this camel it <laughs> looks like he got bit by a zombie. He's got some nasty fangs. I don't know if camels really have teeth like that. This is a wretched camel. One in a black. Beautiful sunset in the background. Really bright yellow band in the middle. Some darker red clouds above. And you can see the sand, some of the dust blowing around it, and the lines in the sand from the wind. And this poor camel has probably been wandering for years out there. Is a 2-1 creature for a one in a black. When wretched camel dies, if you control a desert or there is a desert card in the graveyard, target player discards a card. So if he dies and you have a desert in your graveyard or on the field, they'll discard a card. Very cool. Like it. This one looks like it has a blowpipe that's shooting a poison dart out. Definitely. And he's a snake. He's hanging from a tree if you can tell. Who knows how long he's been hanging out there. But yeah, definitely want to run to that in the jungle. Beautiful greens in the background, like the leaves back there. And uh, you can catch the dart in the midair. It is two in a green. It is a creature Naga Warrior. It's just a 3 3. Just a creature. We got this one. Again, God Pharaoh's Faithful. We got the Pharaoh Prowler again. The really wonderful art on this cat. The shading on it is absolutely beautiful. Got another one of these crazy rhinos with a mohawk. Ooh, a rat. I love rats. Ooh, I really like this card. Ruined rat. It looks like he's just catch getting like collecting bones or something like that. Oh no, he's eating a little bit of meat off the bone. It looks like one of his eyes has a little bit of a problem. Really beautiful sun. You can actually see it shining through his ears, which is really nice. His hair. Really fine detail, and he's got a pile of bones. It looks like the lake in the back behind him is just like blood or something. And there's definitely like a piece of that roof just floating up over there, above above the pyramid. Is one in a black, a creature rat, with that touch. That's awesome. And when ruined rat dies, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. That's really cool. It's a death touch rat for a two cost. It's a one one. And when it dies, exile card from opponent's graveyard. Honestly, can't go wrong with that. I got a Steward of Solidarity. This is a one in a white. It looks like these uh, women are stuck in some building as it's collapsing. Maybe her hair is stuck to that pillar as it's falling over. I can't tell why she's leaning over like that. And uh, it doesn't look good for them. It looks like they might get caught in there with all the rubble. It's a creature human warrior. It's a 2-2 two -two for one in a white. It has tap, exert, Steward of Solidarity, create a 1-1 one -one white warrior creature token with vigilance. Oh, that's cool. Vigilance is awesome. So, uh, when you exert, uh, they, I believe they don't untap the next step, but you can keep creating 1-1 one, one white vigilance hosers. I mean warrior creatures. And uh, that's probably one that you create in the back. Awesome card. I got another desert card. It's if near Deadlands, it looks like a part of the city that fell years and years ago. This is a crazy, like, uh, gargoyle creatures walking around beautiful light shading hitting in the tops of the sand as you can see uh, you can count three creatures right there this guy in the foreground this guy in the midground the guy's all the way in the background kind of hidden with all the sand and you can see like an obelisk back there everything's just so decayed definitely don't want to run into them this card has tap add colors to your mana pool tap pay one life add black to your mana pool 
two and two black sacrifice desert sacrifice a desert so not necessarily this one put two negative one negative one counters and target creature and opponent controls activate this ability only anytime you cast a sorcery so this would be good to just dwindle down a creature's power if you have a bunch of deserts to sack or if you want to kill a creature with uh, indestructibility this card can do it the next card i got is uh one black liliana's defeat oh it looks like liliana might be defeated as well in this one you can see she got like her purple energy on her hand she's got her gold like head headgear i guess and her purple like dress in the background very dark picture you can see some flames in the background some smoke over there some stone structure and she might be flying to be honest it's a sorcery it says destroy target black creature or black planeswalker if that permanent was liliana planeswalker her uh, controller loses three life so it's one that kills any black creature or black planeswalker if that permanent with uh with liliana they also lose three life pretty cool card but they have to be black the next card i got is one of these another one of these flip cards i guess uh the double cards this one is refuse it's three in a red it's an instant it looks like this zombie guy is like taking the essence out of this guy's life throwing a lightning bolt into his chest and you can see he's like the only human maybe he's turning him into the blue guy and uh, you can see his other blue zombies behind him are just standing there watching. That's an instant. Refuse deals damage to target spells controller equal to that spells converted mana cost. Oh, cool. And this one is cooperate. And this is where I guess the blue guys are all working together. And this time they have blue energy. It's two and a blue. Instant. There's aftermath. Cast this spell only from your graveyard, then exile it. We should add the grave symbol next to it so you can know. Kind of like the Odyssey set, I think I mentioned that. And this has copy target instant or sorcery spell. You may choose a new target for this copy. Awesome. I like that. And then I got a planes. And a warrior token. I'm on the last two packs. One, the first one I have is the Firebrand Archer. I had this one before. I got the Solitary Camel again, just walking through the desert. The sun always happens to be between those. I feel like it's an astrological thing. I got another Disposal Mummy. I got uh, Beneath the Sands. It looks like Nyssa is standing there trying to get nature to grow through the sands to stop this huge, looks like hands or something up there coming over. Trying to save the city. This is two in the green. Sorcery, search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield. Tap and shuffle your library. And this card also has cycling too. Cool. Very beautiful green in this picture. A lot of desert. I got another grizzly survivor. I got another guy taming an alligator. Crazy. Pretty crazy. I got another grave and abomination. Got another steadfast scent. Another kitty cat. I got a desert of the truth. Looks like the Sphinx over there. Looks like it's breaking just like in real life. I believe in, uh, I think Nazis were shooting at it to break the face of it uh, back in like World War II or something like that, which is a shame because that was a beautiful structure. And it uh, looks like there's like a red river of blood over here. There's quite a few things floating above these. Like there's some mystical power holding it up. You can see quite a few pyramids back there. The sun over there shining down. You can see some of the darker clouds. And then it gets a little lighter in the background. Really nice foreground right here. It shows the red river. Then you notice that the poor statue is just breaking apart. Not good. Next card I got is... Ipnu... Rivulet. It is a land desert. Very beautiful picture. It's like a gorge. You can see rivers running around. Very blue water. Or maybe that's that stuff that turns those guys blue. I'm not really sure. Kind of reminds me of the Grand Canyon in that picture. I like the tree right here in the foreground really, really quite well. And it goes way in the back and just fades into the fogginess. And the beautiful sun shining through. They do a really good job with the lighting in these pictures now, for sure. This says tap. Add colors to your mana pool. Tap. Pay one life. Had one blue chain mana pool and one in a blue tap, sacrifice a desert, not necessarily this one. Target player puts the top four cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Okay, so if you tap and sacrifice a desert and pay a blue, they get to put four cards into their graveyard. Just mill through their deck. 
Next card I got is a Tenacious Hunter. It's a huge gator, and this guy's trying to crawl away, but I don't know if he'll get away from him. He's just in the dark, and you really notice him up first. Very beautiful shading. Look at the detail on the scale and all the shadowing. Very dark sky in the background, very bright colors on this lizard. And then you notice this guy last, I would say, crawling away with the look of despair on him. Two and two green is a creature crocodile. That's a four four. As long as a creature has a negative one, negative one counter on it, Tenacious Hunter has Vigilance and Death Touch. So as long as any creature has a negative one, negative one counter on it, this guy has Vigilance and Death Touch. If he does any damage to a creature, that creature dies, and Vigilance, she doesn't have to tap. Very cool. The next card I got is Desert's Hold. Looks like Quicksand is taking this poor person into the ground. Looks like she's holding some sort of a uh, book or some sort of stone carving and she's just disappearing hoping to reach in the sky for something very dark all around her with the little glimmer of light hope that might fade away it is two and a uh, white and it is an enchantment or enchanted creature when desert's hold enters the battlefield if you control a desert or there is a desert in your graveyard you gain three life enchanted creature can't attack or block and its activated abilities can't be activated quite a few cards like this that just make any card out there almost useless that's cool just put a hold on the creature the next card i have is the rare the endless sands beautiful picture such bright sunlight it's almost bright to look at it you can see someone just their footprints walking across the top of this desert hill hopefully the sand hasn't been scoring them too bad and they're just walking to the sun it has tap and colors to your mana pool two tap exile target creature you control interesting and four tap sacrifice endless sands return each creature card exile with endless sands to the battlefield under its owner's control so this is really if you want to exile a bunch of creatures and then later you can bring them all back just for a crazy flood of people that was the rare then i got a planes and a champion of the wits token all right i'm on the last pack And the first card I got is Disposal Mummy. I got that one. This one is Avian of Enduring Hope. And it looks like some sort of angel creature, bird, flying in the sky with a big spear with the horns pretty much on it again. Got the light like pointing around him, kind of like he's holy or something, like she's holy. I believe it's a female. I can't tell because it also has a bird head. But it's got some wings on, maybe even two sets of wings. Or is that just the cape flying? You can see some of the city in the background. Really dark skies, but really nice sun right behind him. And it's four and a white creature bird clerk. And it's a three three creature with flying and even of enduring hope enters the battlefield, you gain three life. So it's a five creature, a five mana cost creature for three three with flying, and when it enters, you get three life. Pretty cool. Got another countervailing winds. My piles have fallen over. Okay. Countervailing winds again. Ooh, this card I really like. The wretched camel. The zombie camel. Got another beneath the sands. Got another lurching rock beast. Got another seer of tomorrow. Very cool. Got another desert of feverant. Got another god pharaoh's faithful. Got another accursed horde. This is a foil actually, yeah. Cool. And you can see this picture better now. And uh, I'm not sure what this is. It's like water or smoke or something like that. And he's got like a shirt over his head. He can't see. But I really like how he's grabbing the chain off the guy's neck and like pulling him towards you. It really looks like he's grabbing you. And uh, cool. Got a uh, mag magma roth. Looks like a rock creature made of like magma walking around. Looks like he's a dripping magma outside of him. Definitely don't want to stand under him. Got some beady red eyes. I don't even know if he has a mouth or eats. Looks like he came out of that like crevice in the wall. Interesting. Got something in the background like an obelisk standing up. And he's just hanging on the mountain protecting it. Three in a red. That's a 5-5 five, five creature. So four costs for a 5-5. Five, five. At the beginning of your upkeep, that makes sense. Put a negative one, negative one counter magma rock. And uh, yeah, so that's why it's a cheap 5-5. Five, five. And whenever you cast a non-creature spell, remove a negative one, negative one counter on Magmaroth. So the only way to keep him alive, after five turns, he'll die. 
unless you start casting non-creature spells. The next card I got is Overcome. Looks like a bunch of horses or those donkeys just running around hold, uh, pulling chariots with them. A bunch of greedy rabbits on them and they're about to fight over and take back their land. Rushing something. You can see some broken down city in the background. Very cool. Very cool. Very dark pictures and dark themes to most of these cards. 3 and 2 green sorcery and has creatures you control. Get plus 2 plus 2 and gain trample until end of turn. That's exactly what this card looks like. About to get trampled over by a bunch of donkeys. The next card I got is the rare, and it's Hour of Promise. It's for and a green. Looks like there's a bunch of locusts coming over, like it's the plague or something like that. And you can see a bunch of the pyramids, and then again, with some of the tops are floating off of it. And this is like a giant locust man. And beautiful colors in the background. Got some greens, reds, purples, and pinks in the sky. Very bright sunset. Got some trees up front, like palm trees. And uh, is this a line of people or is that just rocks? It's hard to tell. And it's a sorcery and it says it's a sorcery for a four and a green. Search your library for up to two land cards, put them onto the battlefield tab, then shuffle your library. If you control three or more deserts, create two, two, two black zombie creature tokens. Cool. So if you control three or more deserts, you get to create some zombie uh, creature tokens and put two lands onto the battlefield, but tapped. Very cool. And then I got a foil, a foil crash through, cool. And then I got a forest and a dream stealer. I just want to check real quick to see if you can put cards in this little storage box or is this just really not worth much. Maybe you can put cards in it, uh, I believe this way. I guess you could put cards in it this way, but it doesn't fit very snugly at all, and they'd just be shuffling around in there. I'm not sure why they included this so much. Cards definitely won't fit that way. I guess you could put, like, little dice or little something like that in there. But this is kind of... It doesn't have to be in there. They could have easily saved packaging and saved some cardboard if they removed that. But I guess they didn't want to, maybe because of the size of these books in the back. Uh, there'd be no other way for them to fit in there unless they had a little bit of spacer. If you can see, they might need that space over the packaging of this without bending it. But then again, I'm not really sure. Anyways, uh, I got some cool cards today. I got a couple Mythics today. I feel like this guy's really good. I got a couple Foils as well. Looks like I got four. Cute. Did I get any Rare Foils? I did get a Rare Foil. Very cool. And these are all the other Rares I got. Very cool. I really like how they brought back these two. Interesting that um, one's facing this way and one's facing the other way. But I guess it makes it easier to tell which card you're casting. So, very cool. Really cool art. Very Egyptian themed, I feel. And uh, no planeswalkers or anything like that. But I had a lot of fun. It's been a little while. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. One little quick thing I noticed about this card, these token cards, I wasn't sure what they were, but I noticed that they're a little bit perforated. So it looks like, I really like this idea, you can kind of bend it and remove these like uh, little counters on it, which is really helpful. So let's see. I actually really like that idea. So good on Wizard of the Coast for doing that. You got an exerted one. An external one. An exerted one again. Some cool negative one, negative one counters. And I'm not sure what the little brick is. But I really like this idea. And I'm actually going to keep these. So, good on you, wizard. Very cool. It would be cool if on the back of these it said plus one, plus one. That's my only little tip. But awesome, I didn't realize that. Cool.